Okay, everybody, we're going to just try to redo today's lesson since there were some Facebook issues. So, good morning, everybody. Let's start off our day with uh, our calendar time. This is how we always start our day at school. So, I'm going to slide you a little closer. Um, who can tell me, what is this? What is our month? March. Very good. All right, so let's sing our March song. Are you ready? There is a month with 31 days, and March is its name. O M A R C H M A R C H M A R C H and March is its name. O leprechauns and shamrocks too. Spring is almost here. M A R C H M A R C H M a R C H and March is its name. Oh, very good. All right, we know it's March, and March is one out of how many months in a year? How many months altogether? Twelve. Very good. All right, we got to sing our months of the year. Are you ready? Shake it out. Let's go. January, February, March, April, May, June. July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Sing loud. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. Very good. So it is March. We need to know what number needs to go here? I know this is today. I need to count and see what number. Can you help me count? Show me your magic finger. Wiggle it high. Wiggle it low. Wiggle it up in a circle. Are you ready? Help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 is a 3 and a 0. Very good. So now I need to put my finger on 30 and go up my elevator. Mm, what day of the week is that? Sunday, mm, Monday. Let's say them all. Ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. How many days in a week? Seven. Let's sing our days of the week. Ready? Days of the week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Very, very good. So we can read today's date. Today is Monday, March 30th, 2020. Can you read it with me? Today is Monday, March 30th, 2020. Great job. All right. What are those, what's this poster behind me? Do you know what that is? Our alphabet. So we, if we want to learn to read and write, we need to know all of these letters and the sounds that they make. So remember, we have a song that we sing that tells us the letter, the sound they make, and we have a little hand motion to help us remember it. Are you ready? All right. Do you know your letter sounds? Do you know your letter sounds? They will help you learn to read. They will help you learn to read. A, 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 B, 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 C, C, K, 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 D, 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 D. E, E, F, 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 G, 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 H, 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 H,
I, 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 J, 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 K, 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 L, 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 M, 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 N, 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 O, O, A, 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 P, 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 Q, 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 R, 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 S, 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 T, 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 U, U, A, 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 V, 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 W, 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 X, 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 Y, 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 Z, 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 Do you know your letter sounds? Do you know your letter sounds? They will help you learn to read. They will help you learn to read. Very good. So we had a special friend last week whose name was Mr. Crunch. He's going to help us find a letter today. We're going to do just one letter all week. Are you ready? Help me sing. I have a hungry friend. His name is Mr. Munch. And what he likes to do all day is gobble up his lunch. He likes the letter Q and things that start with qu. And what he likes to do all day is munch, 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 crunch. Very good. Our letter this week is Q. And Q says qu, qu, qu. Remember in our song we do qu, qu, qu. All right, let's see if we can trace the Q. To make an uppercase Q, the big Q, I start at that top line. I make me a big circle and a kick out just a little bit. Can you do that with your magic finger? Ready? Make a big circle, kick out. That's a capital Q. Big circle kick out for the little leg. Now look at lowercase q. I start at the dotted line and I make a circle, down, kick back. I make a circle, down, kick back. Can you do it with your finger? Ready? Make a circle, go down, kick back. Very good. Q says qu, qu, qu. So when I look up here, I've got some different pictures to go with Q. I have this little ducky. What is he saying? Qua, qua, quack. This little boy right here, he's doing this. Qua, qua, quiet. Very good. Oh, my phone. What is this a picture of? It might be a blanket, but it's sewn together in these little pieces and it's called a qua quilt. Very good. This is a coin. It's a qu qu quarter. Quarter. There's the front and there's the back. And quarters are 25 cents. So qu qu quarter, qu qu queen, and qu qu quail. Very good. Those are some things that go qu. Now I want to read you a story about the quiet quail. And he has a quilt that he loves. So it's from Alpha Tales, the quiet quail. So if I look at that bird, that's a quail. It's a type of bird. And remember, what letter are we doing this week? Q. And sometimes they do a Q. It looks like a backwards P, but we like to do the little curl in the back because it helps us tell it apart a little better. All right. The quiet quail. If you hear a sound Qua, give me a thumbs up. Are you ready? Quincy is a quiet quail. He likes to do quiet things. Quincy likes to snuggle with his favorite quilt and listen to the quiet pitter-patter of the rain. Sometimes on his quiet walks, Quincy meets his friend, Dottie Duck. Dottie is not very quiet. In fact, Dottie is quite loud. Quack, quack, quack. Hi, Quincy. Quack, quack, shouts Dottie. Hello, Dottie, whispers the quiet quail. 
Quincy and Dotty sit in the park. Quack, 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 shouts Dotty. What a beautiful day. Quack, quack. Dotty quacks and quacks till Quincy's head hurts. Dotty, please quit quacking, says Quincy. But Dotty is quacking so loudly she doesn't hear the quiet quail. Quincy decides to go for a swim to drown out Dottie's quacking. He spreads his quilt on the grass and jumps in the pond. Suddenly, Queenie the dog trots by. She grabs Quincy's quilt and runs away. My quilt, cries Quincy. Someone stop Queenie. But Quincy's voice is so quiet, no one hears him. Queenie runs right past Dottie. That's Queenie's quilt, quacks Dottie. Catch Queenie quick. The other animals hear Dottie's loud quacking and they chase Queenie. Queenie is quick, but the other animals are quicker. They snatch Quincy's quilt from Queenie's teeth and they give the quilt back to Queenie. Queenie thanks all the animals for rescuing her quilt, especially Dottie. Your loud quacking saved the day. Quincy tells Dottie, and for once the quiet quail is happy to have such a noisy friend. Very good. There was a lot of cue words in there. Quah, quah. Like in this picture, we have Dottie the duck. What does she say? Quah, quack, quack. She's holding a feather pin that we call a quill. They're sitting on Dottie's what? I mean, on Quincy's quilt. This lady has a crown on her head. Do you know what she is? A queen. And she's got this little coin in her hand that's worth 25 cents. A quarter. Very, very good. So let's look at our cue words again. Can we write them in the air? A big cue is a big circle. Kick out. And a little cue. A little circle. Down. And kick backwards. Like a qu quail and quilt from our story. Very, very good. So this week we're going to keep learning about the number 17. Here it is. I see the numeral, the numbers at the top. I see this big long word, 17. That's the word. And then I can see it in tense frames. So let's look at our little chart. Are you ready? So here's my number 17. Let's practice tracing it. It's a one and a seven across the sky and down from heaven. That's the way to make a seven. Now, in our classroom, we've been talking about this one is showing me that this whole tens frame is full. And we know a tens frame has how many? Ten. Let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, this seven is showing me down here. I need seven more pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our tens frame. It looks just like the one from here. This one is showing me a full tens frame, and the second number is showing me how many pieces left over. So 10 and seven more make 17. Okay? Very good. We already talked about 17, but we're going to keep practicing because sometimes those teen numbers are a little hard. All right. You are doing so, so great. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. All righty. The past week, we started talking about the seven C's and the seven C's of history. It's how the Bible is broken up to these seven big stories. And we've been talking about how the Bible is God's word and it's all true. There's no make-believe stories in it. It's not fairy tales. It all really happened. And God shared his word with us so we can learn more about who he is and his plan for us. So last week we started off up here with creation. God made everything in six normal 24 hour days. He made everything and it was perfect. We had a perfect relationship. The garden was beautiful, but God gave them one rule. Don't eat from that one tree in the middle of the garden, the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we found out the next C was corruption. And corruption means things were messed up. A problem happened. Adam and Eve sinned. They disobeyed God's rule and sin, corruption came in. 
Now people would die. There would be sickness and sadness. Women would have a hard time having babies, and men would have to work hard to produce enough food for their families. And this broke God's heart because this was not how he wanted us to live. But he gave us a choice, and sadly, we chose the wrong. We chose sin, and it separated us. But God didn't stop there, and the world just kept getting worse. And today we're going to talk about this one, corruption. Corruption means something bad has happened. Or not corruption, catastrophe. Miss Megan said it wrong. Say catastrophe. Can you say that? Catastrophe. Catastrophe is when something terrible happened. Like, let's say I had a birthday party and I made this big, beautiful cake and I'm walking it in and I drop it and it just is smushed all on the floor. That would be a catastrophe for my party, right? No cake for anybody. Or a catastrophe could be something more serious, like a bad car wreck on the interstate or a tornado happening in a, in a town and destroying things. That's a catastrophe, right? I'm going to read you a story from the Jesus Storybook Bible about the catastrophe with a guy named Noah. Are you ready? All right. It's called A New Beginning. And if you want to read about um, Noah and the flood from the Bible, you can go to Genesis. It's the first book of the Bible, chapter 6 through 9. It says, Time passed and many people filled the earth. Everyone everywhere had forgotten about God. And we're only doing bad things all the time. God's heart was filled with pain. And God's heart uh, was filled with pain when he saw what had happened to the world he loved. Everywhere was disease and death and destruction. All the things that God hates most. Now Noah was God's friend, which was odd in those days because no one else was. Noah listened to God. He talked to God. He just loved being with God like you like to be with your best friend. Noah, God said, things have gone wrong. People have filled my world with hate instead of love. They are destroying themselves and each other and my world. I must stop them. First, we'll build an ark. Do you know how to build an ark? Neither did Noah, but God knew, and he would show him how. A storm was coming, uh, God told Noah, but I will rescue you. I promise. I'll send the animals to you, ones that creep and crawl and slither and slime and gallop and hop and bound and climb. And don't forget to pack everyone's food. The storm was going to wash away all the hate and sadness and everything that had gone wrong and make the world clean again. God had thought up a way to keep Noah safe, but Noah would have to trust God and do exactly what God told him. So Noah built an ark, short for a big boat. Noah's neighbors came out to watch and point and laugh because they didn't believe Noah about the boat or the storm or needing to be rescued. And Noah must have looked rather silly. His boat was in the desert. The desert, it was nowhere near the sea and there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Why would anyone need an, even an umbrella, let alone a boat? But Noah didn't mind so much what other people thought. He minded what God thought. So he did just what God told him to do. And when the ark was ready, God said, all aboard. And Noah's family and all the animals climbed inside. Then God shut the door. And it started raining. For minutes that joined into hours, that joined into days, that joined into weeks and weeks. And the rain joined into puddles that joined into rivers that joined into lakes that joined into a flood that covered the whole world. Their boat had once seemed so big, suddenly felt very small. But in the middle of the huge storm, in the crashing waves and all the thunder and lightning, through it all, God was with them. And he kept them safe for 40 long days and 40 long nights. Finally, the rain stopped. The sun came out and Noah threw open all the windows. Hooray, everyone shouted. Noah sent his dove out to explore. And it wasn't long before she brought him back a fresh olive leaf. Everyone knew exactly what that meant. She had found a tree and land. The water was going down. At last, the boat landed quite suddenly on top of a great mountain. As soon as it was safe, God said, out you come. And so they did. Everyone skipping and dancing onto the dry land. The first thing Noah did was to thank God for rescuing them, just as he had promised. And the first thing God did was make another promise. I won't ever destroy the world again. And like a warrior who puts away his bow and arrow at the end of a great battle, God said, see, 
I've hung up my bow in the clouds. See the rainbow? And there in the clouds, just where the storm meets the sun, was a beautiful bow of light. It was a new beginning in God's world. It wasn't long before everything went wrong again, but God wasn't surprised. He knew this would happen. That's why before the beginning of time, he had another plan, a better plan. A plan not to destroy the world, but to rescue it. A plan to one day send his own son, the rescuer, Jesus. God's strong anger against hate and sadness and death would come down once more, but not on his people or his world. No, God's war bow was not pointing down at its people. It was pointing into the heart of heaven. Now, I want to talk about this for a second. God never intended, never wanted the world to be full of sin and hate and sadness and all the problems that we have. But he loved us enough to give us a choice. So yesterday, I talked about how um, if you love someone, you'll do what they say. And God wanted Adam and Eve to choose to obey and to love God. Not to be forced to, but to choose that's why he gave them a choice. Obey my rules or this happens. And that's how our life is too. Um, Noah was building this ark and everybody was making fun of him. It wasn't comfortable for him to do it. It was a lot of work. It took him years to build the ark. They didn't have cranes and um, uh, construction equipment like we have today. Him and his sons worked together to build this ark. And God was there giving them direction of how to do it. Um, and while Noah was building this and the people were out there making fun of him, you know, Noah didn't want other people, he didn't want his friends and his family and his neighbors to die in the flood. He was telling them, come over here. God's going to save you. Just do this. Help me. And we'll, we'll work this together. And they laughed at him and they, they didn't believe him. They said, we, we don't need you. We don't need rescued. You're crazy. Do you know what? God is still reaching out as a way to rescue us now. We're in a storm right now with all of this craziness in our world, with this virus and social distancing. It's, an, it's sometimes a scary and a time of the unknown. We don't know when this will end or how it's going to turn out. But as Christians, we put our faith not in this world but in God, in Jesus and what he did on the cross. And he's going to go just like Noah. They were in that boat and it must have been terrifying for the waters to come up so high and for it to be a storm and just to be, and to realize you're the only ones left. That's, it was just him and his family on the boat. That was terrifying. But you know what? God was with them through the storm. He know it still had to go through the storm. He still had to do all that hard work of building the ark and be on the boat for all those days and take care of the animals and live his faith out. And God's doing the same thing for us. He will see us through this storm. And we have the choice to trust him and to be made stronger and have a better relationship with God through this storm or just to fall victim to our worry and fear and turn away from him. All right. Um, I'm going to post some videos, um, some things to go along with the Bible lesson. This summer, I got to go to the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum. It is amazing. They bring the Bible to life. You can actually go in the Ark. They built it exactly how God told Noah to build it. And uh, they answer a lot of questions like how did the animals, maybe how were they in the Ark? And, you know, were there dinosaurs on the Ark? How would you get all these big animals? Maybe the animals were babies, were small when they were on the Ark so that they wouldn't take up so much room. How did they take care of things like the restroom and getting rid of waste? How did they take care of the food? How did they live on the boat? And the Ark Encounter really explains it in, in a very common sense, practical way. It goes through all the seven seas and the Creation Museum. I'm going to post some links because it really answers a lot of questions that even, Miss Megan, I've grown up in church my whole life, and I thank God for that. Uh, but to put a physical spin on things and to be able to see and touch it really brings the Bible to life because the Bible is God's word and it is true. I want to do one more thing before we leave, and it's a cute little story, and I moved it, so i got to get it. Hold on. It is spring and it's almost Easter. So I thought we would do a cute little poem about some bunnies, some little rabbits, little bunnies, all right? So you got to help me count, okay? There's my bunny. It says, one little bunny saw some grass to chew. He met a friend and then there were, how many? One, two. 
two little bunnies hopped to a tree. Along came another. And then there were one, two, three. Three little bunnies wanted more. Found one soon. And then there were four. Four little bunnies found a beehive. They spied another bunny. And now there are five. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. You want to do it again? Let's do it one more time. See if you can help me with it this time. How many do I got to start off with? One. One little bunny saw some grass to chew. He met a friend. And then there were two. Two little bunnies hopped to a tree. Along came another. Then there were three. Three little bunnies wanted more. Found one soon. And then there were, whoop, Mr. Bunny, come back. Then there were four. Four little bunnies found a beehive. They spied another bunny. And then there were five. Very, very good. All right, last thing. Last week, a lot of neighborhoods, they hid teddy bears in their windows. And they invited people to go for walks or for rides through neighborhoods and go on a bear hunt. Well, Easter's coming up. So, what is this? An Easter egg. All right, so we can't do maybe a community or a church Easter egg like we're used to. You can still do them with your family in your yard. But this is another way to help out your friends in your neighborhood um, have something fun to do and still do the social distancing. So you can color an Easter egg and you can tape it in your window. You can do as many as you want. And then maybe you go on a walk in your neighborhood or get in the car and drive around and see if you can count how many eggs you find. Do you think that's something you can do? I think that would be a lot of fun for everyone to do. I'll post a link. Um, I found these little templates on Pinterest. Um, you could just draw an egg however you want to do it. All right. Love you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to keep pre-recording so that maybe we won't have that issue of the sound going out. All right.